when the schedule was released, what were your thoughts? Hey, considering your background, the Jets opening up Monday Night Football against the 49ers. I love it. You know, um, what a great opportunity to play. Um, one of the best, if not the best team in football right now. Um, one of the historic franchises, and then obviously one that I played at for 10 years. And um, I was raised in that area, so was a, a lifelong 40, 49er fan as well. Um, could not be more excited, you know, to to be the best. You want to play the best. You want to beat the best. And and uh, what a great test early on. So when you think about your career in San Francisco, what stands out? Oh, uh, just the teammates more than anything. You know, just had an amazing group of teammates and friends and um, created lifelong relationships there. And and uh, and also to be part of such a historic franchise was uh, it was a great honor. You know, when you walk in that building every day. There's five Super Bowl trophies that wait for you, and um, and there's a high level expectation, and and that's a great thing when you when you play there, and um, it's something that we're trying to build here. You've always downplayed it, but give me a scouting report on what Brick was like as, as a player entering was, the league and then in the back half. Yeah, I was um, a 250 pound first and second down linebacker, um, decent physicality, decent instinct. Um, was willing to play hard and prepare harder than most, I think. Um, and it was funny as my as my uh, my journey transitioned later in my career. We drafted Patrick Willis towards the yeah. back end of my career, so I went from this big first and second down linebacker to a guy that was um, that had to play special teams. And to play special teams, I needed to lose a bunch of weight, um, you know, so I could just run. And plus, I was older at that time. And you don't get faster with age, I've, I found, <laughs> you know, and. Um, you know, so I became a special team player and, and more of like a third down coverage linebacker at the end of my career. So it was uh, it was interesting that I got to do a little bit of all of it and uh, really fortunate for that, you know, and really gained an appreciation for um, not only defense, but but special teams. And I think sometimes um, guys don't always gain that same appreciation unless they've really played it. What defensive systems were you playing? On? Shoot, I, I started with Jim Mora. Um, which was kind of the classic uh, 49er system back with even the Bill Walsh days. It was a playbook that had been there a long time. I remember the first time uh, I got there and they handed me the playbook and um, no exaggeration, the playbook was that big. And there was a million adjustments. And you, you can only imagine over the course of 20 years, how many things had been built in that and how many, um, there were so many reasons why there were so many checks. And when you played in it, you knew that. And I remember my first mini camp, I'm out there and, and uh, I was backing up Ken Norton Jr. He was the he was the starter at linebacker. And I remember, first of all, like there's all this communication to start with and there's the emotion and there's 17 more communications. And I'm, and I'm looking around like, I gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember calling my wife after our one of our first practices like this this uh this journey is going to be a short one I think. For real? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. But then as with anything, you work hard at it and and you really uh you grind and you and you study and you and you put the time in and things start to slow down and it becomes, you know, the game that you always loved. Do you think Jeff Albrick 250 pounds first and second down specialty could be playing in today's Oh, absolutely NFL? not. No. No way. The game has gotten so um, wide open. There's just this so much. This is what I want to talk to you about as far yeah. as how what you grew up in from a philosophical standpoint and now where we are today and how that has had an impact on your coaching. Oh, yeah. this this uh, The league has evolved in so many ways. Um, the biggest part of that evolution is the fact that this game has become wide open and it's, it's so based upon speed and creating space and – um, from a defensive perspective, you need guys that can play within that space, um, which takes a lot of speed, a lot of range, a lot of athleticism, um, which was not the was not my forte, <laughs> to say the least. But um, yeah, it's it's changed a lot in that ways, and and you, it's reflected in in the players that we have. We have a lot of really good, cool athletes, you know. And and you've also seen, I think, especially the guys on the second and third level, linebackers, safeties, corners from a defensive perspective, gotten smaller in a lot of ways too, you know, so they could be faster and more athletic. Throughout your coaching career in the National Football League, you coach in college as well, and we know that. How how has that even changed as well? Not just from your playing career back with the Niners in the early 2000s, right. but maybe from your days in Atlanta. Yeah, like I, 
it, it was it was interesting. The fact that I got to go to college very early on in my coaching career, I think it really helped me because um, college always is kind of a preview of where the NFL is going, you know. Right. And um, to to be at UCLA those three years and really to see that brand of football that was it was all four open, five open, you know, these uh, big open sets where they create a lot of space. And there was um, obviously a huge emphasis in the passing game and maybe a little bit less emphasis in the run game. Uh, it really gave me a preview into what I was about to face coming back into the NFL and um, as this game evolves into um, something similar to that. So definitely helped from that, 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 that uh, perspective. How much is this defense predicated on we do what we do as opposed to, okay, you're going to line up and we're making adjustments off the way you're coming at us schematically. I, I would I would say the foundation of who we are is we're going to do what we do. Um, we take great pride in the fact that um, we got a great coaching staff that really instills uh, technique and base fundamentals and principles that we can lean on and that we can um, really rely on to play the, the brand of defense we want to play. Um, the, the beauty of that is when I get to address the group, I'm not sitting there talking about 17,000 different schematic things. I'm talking about finish. I'm talking about toughness. I'm talking about technique. I'm talking about, to me, the real essence of football. You right. know, And I think that that's what makes us a little different than most. But at the same time, I'd say that like we're not so stubborn as coaches that we don't provide a few wrinkles here and there to keep the offense off balance, you know? And I think that we've really pushed ourselves this off season to grow from a schematic standpoint. So we'll never lose our essence. And that's being based in great technique, um, great strain, great finish, great toughness, great violence. We'll never lose that. Um, but at the same time, I think our guys have really gotten to the point because there is a level of mastery that's been gained at this point, being that it's the fourth year within the system that we can challenge a little bit more from a schematic standpoint without compromising the other stuff. How has that playbook changed than the one that you got in 2000? Now a playbook that you give a rookie in 24. Right. It's first of all, it's digital. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no more paper. Um, yep. It's just, it, it, at least ours, and this is not necessarily a, a reflection of the entire league, it's definitely smaller, you know? And and um, I think what we've done a, a better job here than most places that I've been is, especially for the younger guys, you know, speaking on that, when we hand them that playbook, we make sure it's very simple from the beginning. We want to give these guys a great opportunity to really demonstrate who they are as players, as humans, as teammates. And, and sometimes when you bog them down with a ton, you know, especially from a schematic standpoint, you lose the essence of who these players really are and and you don't gain a true evaluation of them. So I think um, we do a better job of, you know, that first iPad that we give them. It's, it's, very, it's very small as far as what we're asking them to learn. But the continuity here, you mentioned going into year four in the defense. I think you guys are so player centric that you, you're about giving these guys credit for what happens on the field where you don't give yourself enough credit. That's not the way you go about your business. That's your, not your personality, but like there's some things that we have done in here. Telestration wise with Bart Scott breaking down coverages and the pass offs between the defenders where everybody's got to be on a string and you right. guys have just got it down to a T now. Yeah. That is the essence of having success in the, in the NFL, in my opinion is continuity. And it's unfortunate that a lot of organizations, they don't understand that, you know, like to play championship level football, it takes great players, number one, and it will never be any different than that. Great players. And then, um, on top of that, you need these great players to hear the same things over and over and over again be, to the point where it becomes just part of their DNA right. and unconscious competence um, kicks in and guys are just reacting. They're not thinking anymore. And um, we're starting to flirt with that now in year four with this with this group. So it's uh, it's it's exciting. We've come a long way, but we still got a long way to go. And we got the players that are that are capable of taking us to a whole nother space. I personnel's really, really believe that. Personnel's completely different, but go back to your days in Seattle with Pete. I think people saw the evolution there with the Seahawks and said, well, they're cover three. They're lining up, that's what they're right. gonna do in the back end. Can you talk about 
how you guys approach it in the back end now compared to maybe what a version of this defense was when it's when it started right but so yeah pete started with the cover three um and that was what we ran there and it was for all intents and purposes all we ran there you know and and it was um the belief system was we're going to give these guys great fundamentals tools techniques and we're going to let them make the the playbook come to life we're going to really just get out of their way and that has not changed here at all what we play is is much different but the essence of of giving these players these really good players that we have the tools necessary to be successful in getting out of their way that has not changed one thing that robert has always stressed to me is that hey if you are a defensive back you got to win in man situations on third down can you elaborate on that yeah so at the end of the day like first down's important second down's important we get that and we and you don't play a good ball on those the early downs you're not going to play a good overall defense but when it's all said and done, you're going to get them to third and two to six more times than not. Yep. That's that's where this game is won. It's where this game is lost. And in those moments, yeah, you can throw curveballs and throw a zone in here or there, but it's going to come down to your ability to to win the one on one matchup. Period. And uh, third and two to six, when it's for all the marbles, they know we're playing man. We know we're playing man. Who can win? And. Um, to do that in those situations, you better have the right human beings. You better have the right guys that are capable of getting that accomplished. And uh, and we have that here. Percentage-wise, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I know you probably have them at the top of your head. More man in 23? A lot more man in 23 than 21? Um, yeah. When this thing was started. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'd agree with that. Um, I think... We've provided a few more wrinkles that we had than 21, which is just, I think that's the nature of, you know, having continuity. But um, yeah, like the, the, our ability to play man in those windows has definitely gone up because of the human beings that we have. We have, in my opinion, the best um, trio of corners, you know, with Michael Carter and DJ Reed and Sauce, obviously. Like those three, I'll put against anybody in this league. And then we have a guy in Tony Adams that when he's got to play man to man, um, has a score, uh, has a corner skill set, you know, so, uh, great confidence is hit in his ability to do it as well. So in those winning moments, those are the guys that we lean on. And those are the guys that they win more than they lose. And, and those are the guys that are going to help us become a championship level defense this you, year. You can make the argument that sauce Gardner is the best cornerback in the national football league after two years. Um, Robert has, discussed or described him as being a weapon that he is a defensive weapon can you speak to hey potentially him traveling more in 24 because robert said you guys have done that in the past yeah. and you've talked about it as well yeah. but maybe we could see it more this year but you have that luxury because you do have these other guys you have a lot of confidence in starting with dj absolutely yeah like had we not had dj reed we didn't have michael carter even Brandon Eccles and 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 Stiggers, the young guys, and all the guys that we got, um, which we have great confidence in all of them. You know, Sauce has some. Uh, he has some very unique qualities. You know, he's he's a guy that's obviously he's super long and he's big and he's bigger than most corners, but his transitions, his foot quickness, his speed is just so unique for a guy so high cut and long legged. It doesn't make like physical sense to me most of the time when I really watch him, especially the line of scrimmage stuff and matching guys in and out of breaks. Um, the matching stuff, it it it's a powerful tool. And it's like you said, we've we've utilized it, yeah. you know, um, that we need to utilize, in my opinion, a little bit more, you know, just from the standpoint of, like, I think him and DJ are very comparable corners, but both excellent, both world-class in what they do. The thing with Sauce is he's also got, a little bit of a reputation too across the league. And I really believe that that gets into quarterbacks minds at times, yeah. you know? So no doubt matching is, is, is as much about eliminating a great player on offense as it is steering the ball somewhere else where you want it, you know? So, um, the beauty of our situation is, okay, we'll match sauce at times on their guy and 
we'll steer the ball exactly where we want it. We want him to throw to DJ. We want to throw him to Michael Carter. We want him to throw to Tony Adams. And we have great um, confidence and belief that they'll, they'll get the job done. It's interesting over the years, isn't it, how people have viewed the cornerback position? Because I was afforded the opportunity to cover Revis when he was here. And you always had the option of, yeah, you can stick Revis on Megatron, or you can put him on the second receiver, and you can double Megatron. If Absolutely, you want. yeah, yeah. I think you ha always had that option, you yeah. know. Like, um, and there's, I think there's value to both of those mindsets. And I think at the end of the day, the always never boxes you got to check, and you got to make sure that at times you're doing that, but at times you're you're putting your best on their best. What do you sense differently from Sauce here heading into year three? I can't even believe we're saying that he's yeah. heading into year three. I, I knew you were high on him. But did you think he'd be to this level at this point right. so early? I, I don't think anybody can ever really say that. You know, I think we can all hope. And um, we definitely were super excited about um, the potential that we saw in him. But to say that he was going to become an, an all pro immediately and to have such success so early on, I think it's it's just it's so rare. And it's a, it's a testament to the not just the player and the athlete that he is, but the human that he is like he. He is grounded in this um, mindset that the only way I get better is working and 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 uh, putting the time that's necessary. And he's committed to that. And that's the reason he's had the, the success, aside from his physical talent, aside from all the stuff that God has given him, um, he puts the work in. This year, I've really felt a concerted effort to to be the leader that he's yeah, capable no of becoming. Like I've, I've heard his voice um, way more vocal on and off the field in the meeting rooms. I mean, there is uh, there was a unit meeting a couple weeks ago where like he, for, for all intents and purposes, he took the meeting over, you know, and, and had a lot of feedback and, and he was creating dialogue with the safeties, creating dialogues with the other corners, creating dialogue with the, with the linebackers. And um, it's one of those like just really proud, moments as a coach because you know as we all know the the best defenses are our player run they really are those are the guys that cross the white line those are the guys in critical moments that got to win and and he's starting to emerge as that leader that's necessary for great defense that's such a cool group like you said you'll take them against anybody and then tony odin heading up the cornerbacks heck yeah <laughs> such a quality coach and person let's talk about safety position robert has stressed competition there yep. Chuck Clark, we didn't have the opportunity to see him last right. year. What's it been like just having him back on the field during OTAs? Yeah, it's it's been awesome. Um, a guy that's obviously got a ton of experience, played high level football in this league. Um, I just it broke my heart last year, not just for us because obviously we were relying on him and and he, we all thought he played a big role in our defense, but for the the leader and the man that he is, he just stands for everything that that we covet in this building, toughness and love for this game and um, to be a great teammate, to be accountable and reliable. He's he's all of that. And he's got a level of maturity to him that's just so unique. Um, last year, he tears his ACL and heartbreaking for himself. Most guys in those situations, they go home, they spend time with their family, they rehab at a, at a local place um, near their family. Chuck, other than a few weeks here or there, he stayed with us the entire season, which is so rare in this business. Yeah. Stayed with us because although he had never played a game with us, he'd built this, this such strong connection with the the players on our defense and especially within that secondary, especially within that safety room. And just wanted to be a part of it, wanted to be around it, and uh, also had great respect and trust in our training staff and our in our in our weight room guys that um, that he this was the best place that that he could be to get better and become the player that that we all know that he can be. So I'm I'm just so excited for him to to be with us this year. And, and uh, there's a lot of competition in that room. And, um, you know, we'll see who the, 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 the two that emerge. But regardless of who emerges as the two starters, they all have a significant role in our defense. You mentioned T.A.'s athleticism. And what impressed me last year in the summer was that he just played with the spark. He mm. had this, this, there's this energy about him. We saw him progress last year on the field. What's his next step? Yeah, that, that's not to be discounted. And, and I probably shouldn't have mentioned that first and foremost, his, that he is the ultimate energy giver that I've ever been around. Like, really? Oh, he's just, 
his love for this game, his love for his teammates, it's just infectious. It's every day. He never turns it off. Um, the edge he plays with, you know, the 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 stuff he says to the offense on a daily basis yeah. is very entertaining. You know, like <laughs> like if you don't get juiced up and if you don't get excited about football when you're around him, then then you don't belong in this game. You really don't. Um, and for him, it's just more time on task. The more he does this because he works so hard at it, he'll just he'll inevitably just get better and better and better. You know, I know he would say that um, he needs to become a better tackler and and he will become a better tackler. I know that because every day. He's out here, he's working on his tracking, he's taking the extra step, he's putting on bodies on bodies, like he's he's doing everything necessary to make sure that he's the best tackling safety in this league. Why does the ball find Ashton Davis? It, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I do know and I don't know. I mean, he's a good athlete. He it's just a, has amazing instinct. Yeah. And he's got this nose for the ball that's just, uh, it's uncanny, you yeah. know? And he has, uh, I think there's an element to guys that like, that are so, uh, doing it by the book, doing it by the playbook. And then there's guys that got a little bit of um, the censored version I'm trying to say. Here. Is it like a freelancing within the system? A, li a little bit, a little bit of like, you know, he's got a little bit of, a little bit of effort at times in the most positive of ways yeah. where it's like, I know I'm supposed to be here and I'm here, but I know the ball's going here. And he, and he's one of those few guys that allows himself um, to go where he thinks the ball is going, you know, and, and he's been rewarded for it a lot of times. I mean, he's by far, he's he's demonstrated as our best ball guy, you know, on defense. So, and you know, when when we we thought about the opportunity of potentially losing him this offseason, you know, that that hurt my heart because he's such an integral part of what we do. You know, he's he's played so many roles for us. He started here at safety. He started here at 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 a variation of nickel. He's um, He's played essentially linebacker for us at times. So he's such a critical piece to what we do. And at the same time, he's a game changer because he does get the ball. Quietly, a lot of changes up front. You're talking about Quinnen's there, foundational piece. We know that. Solomon yep. Thomas resigns, but you guys signed Lucky Foto. And then also Javon Kinlaw, a former Niner. Yep. And then on the outside, Bryce Hoff signs the lucrative deal with Philadelphia. You trade. Uh, John Franklin Myers to Denver, yep. and Hassan Reddick is here. So a lot of different faces. Um, I know the expectations won't change, but what do you make of the different landscape there? I, I'm so excited about this group and to get them together and to really spend time together. It's, it's, uh, I was just telling um, Coach Sala this morning, I just there's a part of me wants want I just want to fast forward to training camp, you know, because I really? want to. I want to get these guys in in pads. I don't want to. I want to play real football with them, you know, and and see what we got in them. But I'm I'm just so excited about the entire group. So grateful for all that Bryce did for us because um, you just it's he's a world class pass rusher and he and he won in critical moments and and he'll, he'll be missed and and JFM is a guy that was really near and dear to my heart. Um, I love not just the football player, but. I really got to see him grow as a human being here, yeah. you know, and become a different guy and a, and a leader and um, just embodied everything that we, we, uh, that we love around here about football and, uh, and he'll be missed as well, you know, and, but for us to get Solomon Thomas back is huge. Cause he is our, he is our ambassador of strain and, and he lives it every day and he's another energy giver in the highest level, just like TA and to bring a guy in like Javon Kinlaw, a big, explosive violent athlete that um in my opinion like has not played his best football yet and the nfl does not know who this man can be and he's about to show the entire world exactly who he is and and in my opinion that's a top d tackle in this league did so, you like him coming out i did loved yeah. him. like it, he was going to be our pick in atlanta really he was and then uh they jumped in front of us and they and they took him but um always i talked to kyle about him at league meetings, just jumping around to the breakfast tables, NFC coaches' breakfast, and he said, frankly, we would have liked to get them. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's been an element of injury and, a, and, a, and an element of opportunity that have just, for whatever reason, was was not right, and that's nobody's fault, you know? But um, he's he's going to have good health here, and he's going to have opportunity, and with the combination of those two things. And plus, now that he's he's got some experience in this league, and the beauty of it is he's staying in the same front system. Yeah, um, he'll be able to just 
he, he's uh, like I don't want to say too much because I want him to really demonstrate it with his actions. But and, you're excited. You know, you're clearly excited. about Super it. excited. Yeah, super excited. And Lakey as well. Like he's another guy that he's one of those guys that embodies strain, toughness, violence. Um, and when you play in a lot of multiple fronts and you're playing in a lot of different techniques, it's hard sometimes to just demonstrate that all the time. Um, this front that we have is made for guys like him hmm. that just go and they go hard and they're violent they're tight, and all the things that he embodies. So I'm, I'm super excited about Lakey as well. So it's, uh, it's been an exciting addition, you know, to this group, Hassan as well. Like, obviously he's, uh, you know, he's a guy that's going to change us in a lot of ways. His sack production is, it's, it, it's unreal, you know, and, and his ability to really finish games and, and win in critical moments. He's, He's a guy that's going to add a deft another element to our defense. We're taping this during OTAs. What makes him a unique pass rusher? What, why? Like you just talked about right. his production. He's got 50 and a half sacks the last four years. Yep. I mean, line him up, he's going double digits. Right. Why does he constantly get there? And also, he takes the ball away. He does. The force fumbles. It's unreal. Yes. It's a, it's a combination of a lot of things. You know, coming – from Temple, he did a little bit of everything there. He played off the ball, he played on the ball. And I think when he was he was coming out, nobody knew really what he was gonna be or could be or what position he should necessarily play um, the majority of the time. And then obviously Arizona drafts him. In Arizona initially, they, they tried to utilize him the same way that Temple did, where he was off the ball, on the ball, doing a little bit of everything not really becoming a master of, of anything right. at the time. And then finally they started to transition him to more of a DN, you know, DPR pass rushing mode. And, and, uh, and at first all you saw was speed and you saw a guy just run around tackles. And when he got there, he was a guy that was so cognizant of the ball that, um, like you said, he, he took the ball off a lot of people, but as we all know, like in time, when people really learn your game, speed isn't going to be enough, you know, and uh, to really see him evolve over these last couple of years and really create an arsenal of moves. He's a guy now that he can counter inside. He can beat you outside with speed. He's got an element of power that he's developed, which you have to have to have to be a successful pass rusher. And at the same time, um, his ability and knack for the ball has never changed. So um, he's a, just a growing, evolving player that, and I know this sounds crazy with a guy that's got 50 sacks in his resume, but I don't think ever any, anyone's seen the best version of him. I think last year um, he played good football. I think you get this guy seven, eight more opportunities to go forward in a game, you'll see that on the stat sheet, and you'll feel that in the game. Fair enough. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, you mentioned Sauce Gardner before, stepping up as a leader. Yep. Kind of sense the same thing from him now entering year three as well? Yeah, like he's a – you know, to be a leader, you got to walk the walk and um, you got to demonstrate with your actions before you say anything, you know, because I, I see way better than I hear. And he's a guy that I don't say this lightly, you know, especially with a guy like Solly on our roster, who is as hard working as, as anybody I've ever been around, that he is we call stack monsters when the ball's thrown, the defensive line gets out of the stack. I, I would challenge any coach in this league or player in this league to say that you, you can't find a better stack monster than Jermaine Johnson. So here's a guy that he's got crazy talent because he's long, he's fast, he's powerful, he's violent. He's really starting to understand how to rush. But at the same time, he's earned the right to be a leader because of his work ethic and the stuff that takes no talent, his effort, his strain, his, his ability to come out of the stack every time. That's what's really earn the stripes to to stand up and and demand things of his teammates and hold them accountable and and it's going to be fun this year to watch him continue to grow in that role. I think you kind of have to have this as you're going to be playing between the white lines every Sunday but he's got kind of an FU mentality he does. Out, out there. It, he, and it's unique because in this setting you would say he's very docile. Right. In this setting you'd say he's got like some cool casualness to him you know because he is he's he's cooler than me you know it's, it's not very hard to do but he's got some like as they say he's got some swag to him the way he carries himself and and in my experience typically those guys that are casual and cool and swaggy they might not always demonstrate that high level strain and toughness and grit but he plays like a guy with no swag, you know, he plays like a guy that's got no casualness, no coolness to him. You know, he plays like the, I told him this multiple times last year that we broke this down. Uh, we had Bart break this down 
in here, Telestration wise. It was a game that you guys lost. You didn't play up to your standards, but it was by the goal line. You probably remember the play. Is that Zach Martin, perhaps the best guard in the National Football yep. League, he's, he's pulling. And Jermaine took him on and it said, I, I, I don't remember who made the tackle, but the play that just stands out is there's Jermaine saying, Yeah, I know he's coming. I'm meeting him. Yep. And w- they're not getting in. And that's every every play. <laughs> that's every play. Like I we play nine techniques, as everybody knows, and and that means that a lot of times tight ends have to try to block our ends. And uh I've seen him make tight ends tap in games. Mm. You know, definitely cringing, definitely flinching, definitely closing their eyes by the fourth quarter. All right, let's go back to the linebacker position. CJ Mosley, heart of the defense. He takes a restructure, wants to be here. That's awesome. Let's talk about the team MVP, the 2023 Quincy Williams. You go a ways back with him. Yeah. Can you talk about this linebacker defender coming out of Murray State and uh, perhaps your scouting evaluation of him? Yeah. Before I talk about Quincy, just really quick about Quinn and, and CJ, like, yeah. Just so that everyone understands, none of this works without the two of those human beings. None the, of it. the heart. The center. They are they are the absolute heart, and more than where they're located in our defense, just all they embody, all they stand for, um, the standard and the level of play each week that they they come with, and they're the the way they prepare, really, the way they operate within our building is just so unique and uncommon, and and we would not be the defense without those two human beings. You know, all right, so, so so if you want to go there. Do you think Quinnen takes note of Aaron Donald retiring? Because he's all team. He right. wants to win here. For sure. he, he he was drafted here, and that's the number one thing for Quinnen Williams, no doubt. But with that being said, if you're a competitor too, and you want to be thought of on a different level, I think it would be natural to say, listen, man, I, I want to be known as the best defensive tackle in the National Football League. No, without a doubt. And I think that he's capable of that, and I think he's very close to that. Um, I think, whether he'd admit this or not, I think that like an Aaron Donald retiring might piss him off a little bit from the standpoint, like I want to be – I want to be the best DT with that guy playing, yeah. you know, and and that's he's definitely capable of that, and he's close to it, and and it's going to be really fun to watch him become that, you know, and and there's no doubt in my mind that at the end of this next season that there's nobody in the in the NFL that will be able to say differently that he is going to be the best D tackle in all of the NFL this year. So let's go back to Quincy Williams. Quincy, yeah, he is a, I've I've loved him since Murray State. Like um, I'm in Atlanta and. Uh, I got an opportunity to work him out um, at University of, of UAB in Birmingham, his hometown, and uh, spent a day with him out there. First of all, he almost broke my arm in a as he hit me with a, a, a blocking shield and about tore the ligaments off of my forearm because like he's he's a very unique guy. And it's funny when these young guys get around him outside that maybe maybe guys that aren't completely familiar with the NFL game. But you see Quincy, and he's and he's short statured, and and um, he might not look like the prototypical like linebacker from the right. NFL. But don't get it twisted. There is not a more explosive linebacker in the NFL right now playing. You know, and and I definitely felt it that day when I worked him out. Um, he he made me very sore, but I still remember I was also working him out with another player that was at UAB, and we got in the classroom as we always do when we work these guys out and to you know get an idea about their level of their ability to learn and and uh, articulate the defense they were playing, but also help uh, us see if they can absorb and articulate the defense that 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 we play. And uh, I remember it was like yesterday the way he got up on the board and the UAB linebacker was struggling a little bit with learning it. And the way he took the meeting over and kind of started to teach him and, and put in his own words. And and uh, so I was blown away by the athlete, but I also became blown away with the mind, um, his love for this game. And now that I've got an opportunity to really be around him, he's a guy that just, he's, he, he could be the best linebacker in the NFL right now, you know, and 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 it's funny because a lot of guys 
they get paid when they become that, when they become pro bowlers, they become all pros and their level of work and dedication still good, but it might not be great. Like I've seen this guy go the other way. Like he got a taste of success and he wants more. Um, Like we've, we've talked about all the time, like he got a good bag of money, but he's in store to get a, 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 a really big bag of money now because he is really he pulled apart from the group last year as far as the entire nfl's linebackers you know and i think he's going to take another step this year speak to that why did he pull apart because why just, is he different because just so willing to work it's just so rare when you get a guy with his athletic skill set he's explosive he's fast um he has the 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 profile that I love where a little bit short statured because your change of direction and your natural leverage for striking, but he's got extremely long levers, which a lot of people don't know that he's, you know, 33 plus inch arm. So the combination of the athleticism, the body that he has, and now the brain that he has on top of the, the desire, the love and the ability to, and, and, you know, the, the work ethic, he's just going to continue to grow and, and, and keep soaring. What are you saying to the fellas out here in the spring when Rodgers is looking down the right sideline, coming back, throwing a no look across the middle, or he's rolling right on a boot, coming right. back, throwing 65 yards down the field? I love it, you know, because it, it just makes you so tight from the back end's perspective. Um, when you're not playing against a quarterback of his caliber, you can get loose with your details at times. I'd like to say that as coaches, we see everything all the time. We make sure um, every detail is just perfect all the time, and we try our best to do that. But there is nothing better than instant feedback of a quarterback getting you on something because your details were just a little bit off, you know? So to have him test us on a daily basis, it just makes us that much better. How much fun are you having? This is entering year four for you. Like you said, the continuity. Yep. You took some lumps. I'll never forget that New England game. I don't remember the score. But you, you said, we could do some quick fixes here, and it might help in the short run. It's not going to help in the long run. Yep. You stuck to your guns, and now here you have this unit and the potential. You got to be talking inside that meeting room that we should be the top defense in the National Football League. Yeah, That's got to be the expectation, Ron. Without a doubt. You know, I'm speaking on whether I'm having fun or not. Like, I don't know if I've ever had more fun coaching this game. It's just. It's just so rare, and I've said this before, but I'll, I'll I'll say it again: is the the character of that room is unlike anyone I've ever been around from top to bottom. Like you cannot be, you can't be an can I say asshole? You can't yeah. you can't be an asshole on this defense. You can't you can't be a self promoter. You can't be a guy that's all about yourself. You can't be selfish. You can't. If you are, you'll stand out like such a sore thumb. You'll get ostracized very quickly. Um, life will not be fun for you, you know, because the guys won't won't allow it. They won't they won't put up with it. Um, the fact that we have this group that is just we have such good human beings. The DNA of these guys are so right. Um, they're so committed to the process. It doesn't matter what we're doing. It doesn't matter meetings, walkthroughs, practice. Like I got to go out there and coach. I don't have to nudge them. I don't have to push them. I don't have to like their level of self-motivation and the way they hold each other accountable is from a collective unit is unlike anything I've ever been around. So because of that, it just makes it, it's such a joy to coach these guys. It really is. Well, it's such a joy to always talk to you. Thanks for coming up here. Enjoy your trips coming up here. Thank you. This summer, man. Get get away. I will. Get away. And then see you back here at training camp. Yep. Time to go. Thanks, brother. Thank you.